line of symmetry and rotational symmetry were at 9.5a in Chapter 9. There's seven previous videos for Chapter 9 that are linked in the description in the Geometry playlist that you can watch if you become lost or confused. A figure has symmetry if there's a transformation of the figures so that the image coincides with the pre-image. We learned about symmetry in grade school. A figure has line symmetry or reflection symmetry if it can be reflected across a line so that the image coincides perfectly with the pre-image. The line of symmetry, also called the axis of symmetry, divides the figure into two congruent halves. So we have this line of symmetry on our heart, and I can fold it and make it into two congruent halves. It perfectly coincides with itself. We can also do the same thing with the little picture of the dog. I could fold it along this line of symmetry, and it would coincide with itself. We can identify line symmetry. We can tell whether a figure has line symmetry, and if it does, we can draw the lines. So for this trapezoid, we have one line of symmetry going this way. We can't go horizontally because then if we folded the bottom up to the top, it wouldn't coincide with itself, would it? For this parallelogram, there's no line of symmetry. If we use my construction paper model here and we try folding it along its diagonal, it does not coincide with itself. And if we try folding it vertically as a line of symmetry, like this, it does not coincide with itself, see? And even if we did it horizontally and folded it up this way, it does not coincide with itself. So there's no line of symmetry for that parallelogram. For this star, we have a five-point star. There's five lines of symmetry. We've got one, two, three, four, and five. We could fold them on any one of those lines of symmetry and it would coincide with itself. For this green shape, we could fold it right here, using that as the line of symmetry, and put the left side folded over onto the right side and it would coincide with itself. It would also work if we had the line of symmetry going horizontally and folded the bottom over to the top. And then this one has no line of symmetry. There's no way that we could fold this to make it coincide with itself. It's too strange of a shape. Human faces appear to have symmetry, but most people's faces aren't perfectly symmetric. This is an actual photo of me when I was 19 years old. That was a long time ago. If I use a line of symmetry going right through the center of my face, coming down like this vertically, I can take two left sides of my face, which would be the right side for the camera, I could take two left sides and create a whole new face, and I could take two right sides and create a whole new face. So cutting a photo down the center and flipping the sides will create two different faces with perfect symmetry. So my face is not symmetrical. If it was, I would look like one of these two photos. Rotational symmetry. A figure has rotational symmetry or radial symmetry if it can be rotated about a point by an angle greater than zero degrees and less than 360 degrees so that the image coincides with the pre-image. The angle of rotational symmetry is the smallest angle through which a figure can be rotated to coincide with itself. And the number of times the figure coincides with itself as it rotates through 360 degrees is called the order of the rotational symmetry. So if we have a square and turn it 90 degrees, we can do it four times. And the angle of rotational symmetry is 90 degrees, and the order of the rotational symmetry is four. I can take this square, and I put the little orange spot here so we can see when we're back to the beginning, and I can turn it 90 degrees once, twice, three times, and then four to be back to the original orientation. That's an order of rotational symmetry 
of a 4. And it has four lines of symmetry. We can identify rotational symmetry. If a figure has it, we can give the angle of rotational symmetry and the order of the symmetry. We look for, does the orientation look the same when it's rotated? For this x, how far will I have to turn it? How many degrees will I turn it so that it'll have the same orientation? Well, I can flip top to bottom. That's 180 degree rotation. We have an order of two. For this shape, I can flip it around 180 degrees and we have an order of two. And even this traffic sign, I can flip it around 180 degrees. It'll have the same orientation with an order of two. For this letter A, how far will I have to turn it before it'll have the same orientation? Well, that's 360 degrees, so that's a none. Even this pug, there's no lines of symmetry here. I would have to flip him around completely 360 degrees to have the same orientation, so that's a none. For this flower shape, I put a little blue dot here so we could see the, the top part. And if I turn it 72 degrees, like this, it'll have the same orientation, and I can do it again, and again, and again, and that would be a fifth time, that's the order five. It has five lines of symmetry, and that also can be rotated. We have an order of five. And this hexagon, if I turn it, we have the flat part on top. If I turn it so that the, this flat part is on top, that's a 60 degree rotation. And this would have an order of six. And this triangle, I can turn it so that this point's on top, that's a 120 degree rotation, and that would have an order of three. This five point star would just be like our pink flower. I put a little dot on the top here so we remember where the top was. I can turn it once like this, rotate it once, 72 degrees, and it's got the same orientation. And I can do it two, three, four, five times, it's got five lines of symmetry. I can rotate it five times, 72 degrees each time. It's got an order of five. And for this rectangle, I can flip it 180 degrees, and it'll have the same orientation. It's an order of two. And it has two lines of symmetry. In this trapezoid, it's got none. I would have to flip it 360 degrees in order for it to have the same orientation. So it's like the pug and the letter A, it has none. And a regular n-gon, so some polygon that has numerous sides that we don't know, so we're using a variable, an n-gon has n lines of symmetry, and that would be order n. A three-dimensional figure has plane symmetry. If a plane can divide the figure into two congruent reflective halves, a three-dimensional figure has symmetry about an axis if there's a line about which the figure can be rotated by an angle greater than zero degrees and less than 360 degrees so that the image coincides with the pre-image. So if we put a, if we had a cylinder and we put a string here, it could rotate around and it would be symmetrical, wouldn't it? Identifying symmetry in three dimensions for plane symmetry, here we've got some rectangular prisms, and we could put a plane coming through here, and these two sides would be congruent to each other. We could also put a plane running horizontally this way, and the top would be congruent to the bottom. We could lay one going this way, and the front would be congruent to the back. We could do one from this back corner vertex to this one, and this would make a triangle that's congruent to a back triangle. We can even lay it diagonally this way, and this triangle prism would be congruent to that triangle prism. 
An equilateral triangular based prism has four planes of symmetry. We could do it right here, and the front and the back would be congruent. We could do it running this way, and the left side would be congruent to the right side. We could put a plane going this way, and this bottom triangular prism would be congruent to the top triangular prism. And we could even do it going this way, and these two would be congruent. We can even do it with a trapezoid. We could put a plane going this way, and the front and back would be congruent. Or we could put a plane going this way, and these two sides would be congruent. So those are examples of prisms with plane symmetry. They have two congruent reflective halves. Here's some examples of plane symmetry with symmetry about an axis. If we had this polygon and we put a string down here and it rotated around, it would have plane symmetry and it could spin around, couldn't it, about the axis and it would be symmetrical. We could do it with this triangular prism or we could do it with this cone. This figure has neither plane symmetry or symmetry about an axis. It's just too weird shaped, isn't it? Yin and yang symbol of balance in Chinese philosophy, if this was our center of rotation right here, the center of rotation will map to itself and all other points will be mapped to another position. So we could flip this around 180 degrees and it would make this symbol. And we could just color in one of the sides black, couldn't we? That's an order of two. For the graph of the equation y equals x squared minus 3, is the y-axis a line of symmetry? Well, let's make a table of values that'll make the equation true. So we'll try negative 3 for x. Negative 3 times negative 3 is a positive 9. We subtract the 3, y equals a 6. And we fill in the table of values, and we get, for positive x, we get a 1, 2, 3. For negative x, we get a negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. So here's our positive x values. Here's our negative x values. And if you look at what's happening with y, we have a 1, negative 2. When we have the inverse of the 1 as a negative 1, we still have negative 2. See? The y values are staying the same, and we're getting inverse x values. When the y-axis is a line of symmetry, every point xy will have a mirror image inverse of xy on the graph. The reflection of xy is the inverse of xy. We did that in the last video, 9.4. So our table of values would have to make ordered pairs that the y values are staying the same when the x values become the inverse. See? How about the graph of y equals x minus 3 squared? We need to make the equation true so we can fill a table of values that'll make this equation true. But if you look at the x and y values, even though we've got our positive 1, 2, 3 and our inverse of 1, 2, 3, look what's happening to our y values. It's not working out. The y's are supposed to stay the same. So no, for the y-axis to be a line of symmetry, we need our x and y values, and we need it to have an inverse of x and y values. So the y's aren't going to change. Just like here, they didn't change. See? You can try going through the 26 letters of the alphabet to find each type of symmetry. Find horizontal, vertical, two lines, rotational but not line symmetry, or no symmetry. And if you want to pause the video right now and try that, I'll show you the answers. So for horizontal symmetry, notice that I'm using uppercase letters we would have B, C, D, E. For vertical symmetry, we'd have the letters A, I, M, T, U, V, W, and Y. For two lines of symmetry, we would have the letters H, O, and X. For rotational symmetry, but not line symmetry, we'd have N, S, and Z. And for no symmetry, we have the letters F, G, J, K, L, P, Q, and R. 
So I hope this was informative and I hope you were able to take notes on my little yellow pointy hands that tell you to take notes. And I hope you understand line of symmetry and rotational symmetry now and order. And I hope you have a great day and I'll see you for the second part of this lesson, 9.5b, where we're going to talk about solids of revolutions. Then we're going to talk about tessellations and dilations before moving into chapter 10. Bye.